Hello everyone, welcome to my talk. Today I'm going to talk about uh, our new framework and uh, realization for password-based key exchange protocol. We will talk about the introduction followed by the framework and uh, finally instantiation and uh, we show the efficiency also. We go to the introduction. Key exchange pro is a very uh, well known uh, topic. It studies two or more parties and on how to establish a common secret key. We study password based key, ex key exchange. In this case, two parties only share a short password. The challenge for this uh, problem is that the attacker could obtain a short uh, fixed function value of the password pi. And then he can exhaust the password space to identify the correct pi that's consistent with the function value. This is called an offline dictionary attack. So this password based change was first studied by Belevin and Merritt in 1992. The first provable secure construction with rigorous model is due to better point table and uh, uh, logway in 2000. But their solution was in the random org mode. After that, there's many Authors study this problem. We study the, this the same problem, but in the lattice setting. In fact, in the literature, there are several frameworks were proposed. Um, and uh, these frameworks are realizable in the lattice setting. So also there's a a uh, RIN LWE based uh, uh, PICS that's uh, proposed by uh, Dean, etc. in 2017. But uh, the, uh, their solution was in the random work mode. So we study PICS only in the standard mode. So we notice that the previous solutions seem to very much rely on the CCA secure encryption. So we will propose our framework will based on the primitives that's without the uh, CCA secure encryption or it's uh, a similar variance. And uh, we prove the security in the standard mode. We also realize our framework uh, from LWE and uh, RUIN LWE respectively. And uh, we show that they are much more efficient than the previous lattice based picks. So then we talk about our framework. The framework has three ingredients. The first one is one message key reconciliation. In this setting, the two parties, Alice and Bob, are initialized with similar uh, Secret Alice with D and Bob with D prime. They are, they are, uh, has a short distance. So they want to share a common secret. To do this, Alice, this, uh, Alice use a, a function to compute a message and uh, a secret sign. The message is sent to Bob 
the sigma. The the out is the output sign as the common secret. So this is uh, so Bob receives this sigma. Then he uses d prime and the sigma to recover the common secret. So this is one message k reconciliation scheme. We will construct a, a very efficient uh, scheme. But before that, we introduce one uh, observation. Suppose D and D prime is the number in the modular ring for O1. And uh, suppose the D prime and the D are close, so that the difference belongs to the interval minus eight to eight. So we consider an integer of eight bits, where the A4, A3 is constant zero one. So observation is that F plus D prime minus D modulo 401 equals the same expression without the modulo. So the crucial part is that the expression has the first, the highest three bits, A7, A6, A5. It remains the same as that of F. So why is this? The reason is that 0, 1, A2, A1, A0 belongs to interval 8 to 16. D prime minus D belongs to interval minus 8 to 8. So added together is the number belongs to interval 0 to 24. So this is 5 bits. So they added together, they kind of change the bit A5 in the above uh, expression. This gives uh, our motivation to um, construct the uh, reconciliation. So in this case, Alice has a secret D. So she can sample the number F randomly, except A3, A4, that's a constant one zero. So she sends the sigma equals F plus D modular 401 to Bob. Bob has a secret D prime that's close to D. So when Bob receives sigma, he compute sigma minus D modular 401, which as we have observed in the previous slides is F plus D minus D in the integer um, domain. So this remains the same for the highest of the three bits, A7, A6, A5. As, um, so they can share the A7, A6, A5, the three bits. So why is this? Why is it secure, right? Because the only message is sigma from Alice to Bob. So the secret F in sigma is masked by the one time part D, where the D is uniformly random over Z401. Then we talk about the next primitive. That's uh, k fuzzy message authentic encode. This is a Mac that has that has a normal property for the message authentic encode, where Alice and Bob share a secret key, k. So Alice can compute a authentic encode by just use a function f to compute f k of m which is eta, then send it to Bob. Bob with the secret key, K, can verify 
the eta just uh, by recompute the the syndic encode. So the key fuzzy is we have we require that the, this syndic encode have a authoritative verification function. That's a fuzzy verification phi function. So in this case, Bob has a secret that's not exactly k, which but it's close to k. And uh, when Bob receives the same key code, eta and m, so he can use the phi k prime to verify the syndication code and the message. The, for this to, this should be accept the, the syndication code as long as k and k prime uh, is close. Of course, for this uh, fuzzy verification to be meaningful, you have to reject the attacker's uh, uh, forgery. In this case, we consider the attacker that uh, has a one-time security. The attacker with a message and the syndicate code uh, cannot forge a new uh, syndicate code for some another message in prime. So we require that the Bob always reject the uh, forged syndicate code as long as k prime is close to k. Now we are provide a construction for this the um, syndicate code. We will use the error correcting code C with large timing distance. And also another clean resistant hash. Suppose the secret key is D vector, uh, that's the n length vector over the Q. So for the message M, we consider the uh, code word of HM, which is a, a subset of index set of size n. So the syndicate code is just a sub vector vector of D corresponding to the uh, code word of HM. So that's an index, the index code word is the index that's selected by the the, the um, message of syndicate code in the secret key D. So the verification with another secret vector D prime that's close to D uh, is just to simply recompute the syndicate code under the secret uh, key D prime and compare with the the input syndicate code U to see whether they are close or not. Then we introduce the approximate smooth projective hash. This is the third uh, primitive that we require for the, our framework. This primitive we are built we build this primitive over the commitment. Commitment, you given the input uh, pi, the commitment will output a commitment value y. And uh, uh, um, in, uh, the weight list tau. So, so y is the commitment of pi with weight list tau. So the decommit is tau and a pi. So the commitment scheme has hiding property. 
that would require why shouldn't it require anything about the input pi? Also, it should be binding. That means no one can decommit a string y to different input pipeline and pi. So then we are going to introduce the approximate smooth projective hash. This required to intro, we need to detail the two function, h and the alternative hash, h hat. For h, given the secret key k, and input the pi and a, a variable y from the commitment space, the projective hash h output h of k pi y. The alternative projective hash h hat. In this case, if the y is a commitment of pi with weight this tau, then the projective hash can be approximated as h hat of tau and the function value alpha k, where alpha k is a function of the secret key k. And we, is, this is called a projection key. So we see an example for this ASPH, right? The commitment is to use um, a regular commit, a regular LWE tuple, A, A, S plus X, and also use a, a random vector H. We set A and H as a commitment of a public key. So the commitment to a input, an input pi is Y equals A, S plus X plus H pi where h pi is just the transformation of pi. And the weight of this is s x. So this commitment is hiding y because the LW or something, right? It's binding. So yeah, for this, we show that if s is random, then y can, any y can only be written as the commitment format for only one pi that has a short x for some s. So the projective hash with secret O, which is a, a Gaussian matrix, is O transpose times y minus the password information the uh, input information h pi. Normally, with the above commitment format for the y, this will be O transpose times A s plus O transpose x. Then we want to introduce, uh, we want to use O transpose A s as uh, authoritative projective hashing. To do this, we define the projection key as alpha O equals O transpose times A. So for the weight list, tau equals SX, the alternative hash of with input tau and alpha O is equals, equal to O transpose times A S. So this is approximately equal to the projective hash because O is Gaussian, X is short. So O transpose times X is short. So this is uh, the, the similar ver version for the ring LWE case. Even this looks similar, but it's quite different in the technical uh, argument. Then we are going to introduce our pick framework. 
This has three, which can introduce this for three, uh, compose three basic proof protocols. The first one <coughs> is approximate K establishment. So in this case, the Alice and Bob will introduce, will try to based on password to establish your common and approximately equal secret. In this case, Bob start first. He commit a password and uh, output Y, mod commitment is Y, and uh, the wait list is tau one. He sent Y to Alice. Alice then sample secret key, K, and the compute the uh, projective hash of H of H1 K pi Y, and sent the projection key to Bob. Bob then use the tau one and the projection key to compute a tolerative hash. So normally these two versions are equal. With this approximately equal uh, go key, say a secret key. So Alice and Bob can use the one message key reconciliation to agree on common secret, which is sign. So currently we still didn't talk about the the identity verification, right? To be secure, they have to syndicate each other. To do this, Alice and Bob start from the common secret side. So Alice, so they look, we need, they need to use another smooth approximate uh, smooth projective hash, which is R has alpha two, H hat and H. Alice goes first. She commit using the uh, common uh, secret sign as uh, the um, randomness committed to pi, generate a commitment W and uh, with weight list tau two, and send W to Bob. Bob has the same sign, so he can verify this W and uh, recompute the tau two and the w prime. Then they can use generate this k as a tolerative hash. Based on k, they can syndicate each other for the traffic, right? The crucial part is that for this to be secure, we have to assure the property of the KUF Mac. In this case, the secret key K has to be independent of W and V because the V and the W is known to attacker. So this is called strong smooth least property of ASPH. So this is a crucial point that allow us to use uh, the regular commitment for this commitment too. This also can be much more efficient than the previous syndication that's based on CC secure latency encryption. This is a complete protocol that pitch back the three protocols into one. Then we consider the intentionalization. So for the LWE protocol, that's uh, uh, basically plug all the things together using ASW from LWE. This is a protocol used from the ring LWE based ASPH. So this is the efficiency of our, our protocol. We can see that it's uh, um, more efficient than the previous protocol. Finally, we also 
conduct an experiment of our RIM LW-based protein protocol. It's based on Ubuntu operating system using C++ with NTL package. We can see that under the regular parameter, it has a reasonable uh, timing efficiency and uh, the communication efficiency. Thank you.